Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With everything. With everything. We will shout for your glory with everything, with everything. We will shout for your praise. Lift your hands and bless his name with everything. We Lord, we are saying thank you. We are not ungrateful. We choose to see the things that you are doing in our midst. And Lord, we thank you. We will shout for your praise. One more time with everything. Worship rises from your spirit. One more time, just the voices.
The power of God is healing people right now. Sick bodies are being healed right now. Sick bodies are being healed right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Sick bodies are being healed right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ziba Silaman Pratishala. Your presence is all we have, oh God. Your presence is all we have. In you we make our boast all day long. Your presence is all that we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. I thank you. I thank you for the gift of your presence. This is all that we have. This is all that we have. Your presence. We give you praise. We give you praise. Mighty one of Israel. For no man can do these things except God be with him. Emmanuel. 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 Your name is called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, sing Emmanuel. Emmanuel, the mighty one in the midst of his people, doing wonders, or inspiring wonders. Come on, sing it to the miracle walker. Sing it to the one who can change your life. Your name is called. One more time, lift your voice and sing. Emmanuel. 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 Your name is called. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Help us tonight, O oh God. Spirit of the living God, we depend on you. Help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Greet everyone around you. God bless you. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. 
faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Jehovah you are good You are kind You are more than what we call it Jehovah you are good bigger than what we call you you are greater than what we call you you are higher than what we call you you are better than what we call you Jehovah you are good and you, you are high you are more than what people say Jehovah Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pray tonight and ask the Lord to touch you. Pray that His word will change you. Change us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Good to see everyone. God bless you. Praise God. I want to talk about something very, very important tonight. But first we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Psalm 71. We'll read this scripture and we'll arise. And I want you to pray your life out. Within the next five minutes. And then we will teach. Because in this season God is determined that you must be great and no power in existence will stop it Psalm 71 verse 21 Psalm 71 whether you have a seat or not I want you to just concentrate because the power of God will touch you you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul that's what will happen to you tonight you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul I will be changed His glory will be revealed When the Spirit takes over my soul Ready? Psalm 71 Verse 21 One to read One more time One more time. Jump up on your feet and blast in tongues and say, Lord, this is your word. You are determined to increase my greatness. It says, Thou shall increase my greatness. Thou shall increase my greatness. 
and comfort me round about. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere. You will increase my greatness. You will increase my greatness and comfort me round about. Thou shall increase my greatness. This is your word for me. I receive it. You receive. You increase my greatness financially. You increase my greatness career wise. Go ahead and prophesy and say, Lord, you are determined to increase my greatness. It says, Thou shall increase my greatness. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about. Thou shall increase my greatness. Oh, you will increase my greatness. I will be higher than I am now. Something will come upon me that will take me to the next season of my life. You will increase my greatness. Pray. Tonight, God is about to mark your life and open up the portals for a new season. He said, Thou shall increase my greatness. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me. Lord, we receive your word as a house. You will increase our greatness. 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 Maka parata po shoto praise. Sete karia tabala da da da. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54. Shekata tabaka tabala da ba. Isaiah 52, 54. Isaiah 54. I'll read verse 1, you read verse 2, and then we'll read verse 3 together. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou who did not travel with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 2. Are you ready now verse 3 read it as a prophecy to yourself for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited lift your voice and say i am breaking limits Shake i am breaking forth come on prophesy koinonia i am breaking forth by the power of the holy spirit Nothing limits me. Pray inside and outside. I'm breaking forth. This is the word of the Lord. I'm breaking forth. On the left, breaking forth. On the right, I'm breaking forth. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'm breaking forth. Leke preteketea. Setete pakaliabai. We are breaking forth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ayayayaya. Seka barada balada bakate pressure. Ezekiel 47. Sita baka prende ke bashita palada bai. Ah, before I teach tonight, I have come to prophesy. Man de brandi shalakata. Sike preti shabala daba kanda preti shata. Honestly, I prophesy to you that this is the season that you will begin to break limits. In the name of the Lord Jesus, 
I prophesy, I prophesy upon every area of your life. It's time to move to the next level. It's time to move to the next level. Break barriers, break barriers, break barriers, ancestral barriers, break limitations that came with your lineage. I prophesy to you, rise up. This is your season for your head to be lifted up. This is your season. You will shine like the star. You will shine like the star. Rise up to your destiny. Answer the prophecy of your name. I prophesy to you. Arise. Shine. Your light is come. In this season. Arise. Shake up the dust. Arise. Stop crying. Shine. It's your season to shine. The Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. I prophesy, you are marked for shining. Arise and shine. Shekapa babakata balada ba. Zembre dika shiba la 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 ba. Somebody is leaving his current level. Let me tell you. Listen, I prophesy to you that the level you are now. There is a hand that will pick you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they saw Saul, they said, Is Saul also a prophet? What suddenly happened? A man who left as a houseboy returned back with an anointing. I pray in the name that is above all names. Those who have laughed at you, this is the season they will see the glory of God arise. Those who have mocked your God, I prophesy, this is the season you will arrive. Those who have said it's impossible, may the hand of my God lift you from where you are to where you need to be. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. A man of great destiny was locked up in a pit but the Bible says the king sent for him let me tell you when the king sends for you no power in existence has the ability to stop you when the king if a messenger sends for you is all right but when he said the king sent for Joseph tonight my God is sending for you it's time for your destiny to arrive. The king is sending for you. The king is sending for you. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. Listen. 11 times in my dream the lord kept telling me is the season of breaking forth for god's people 11 times 11 times i have never had such an experience 11 times the lord kept speaking to me that go and prophesy that is the season that's why i came with that verse you can choose to believe it because you see when many people hear the word they are just those who just stand but there are others who say lord this is it this is my word i take it i receive it it is my word ezekiel 47 i'll just share this and we'll pray i want your spirit to be fired up tonight afterwards he brought me again to the door of the house and behold what has issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward and the forefront of the house stood towards the east and the waters came out from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way outside into the outer gate by the way that looks eastward and behold there ran out waters from the right side now listen it says 
and when the man that had the line in his hands went forth each word he measured a thousand cubits that's a level and he brought me through the waters and they were to my ankles again everybody say again oh the last lifting is not the last one the bible says again the word of the lord is coming again for many of us the last time it came was years ago it says arise shine not because there is light the light has come to you when the light comes to you you must arise hallelujah again he measured a thousand cubits and brought me through the waters and the waters were to my knees again he measured a thousand and brought me through and the waters were to my loins afterwards he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river i could not pass for the waters had risen waters to swim and rivers i could not pass over oh the lord will take you higher in the name of jesus christ the lord will take you higher in the name of jesus christ hold hands with somebody and we're going to prophesy combine all these three scriptures together and shout it let the pit of hell know that is your season for lifting go ahead and prophesy it's my season of lifting it's my season of breaking form it's my season of life it's my season of dominion by the power of the holy ghost prophesy breaking forth in every area of your life i'm breaking forth spiritually i'm breaking forth financially hallelujah hallelujah let's take one more scripture revelation chapter 3 man take a babakata labakata revelation chapter 3 from verse 8 is projected are you ready one to read stop it says i know your works in other words i've been watching you although things are not working i watch the way you praise me through the pain he said i know your works and as a result behold see i have set before you an open door he said no man no man no government no devil of darkness can stop it lift your voice and prophesy the door is open for me that prison door is open in the name of the lord jesus shake it take it in. sister receive it for your marriage that door is open receive it for your finances receive it for your career the door is open the power that will stop you must bow tonight oh yes you set before me an open door an open door Can we still pray through more scriptures? Isaiah 45. 
Isaiah 45. I'll read verse 1 and 2. And then I want you to read verse 3 from the depths of your heart. Isaiah 45. Thus saith the Lord unto his anointed Joshua Selman. Whose right hand I have holden. To subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings. To open before him the two leaf gates. It says and the gates shall not be shut. Verse 2. I will go before thee. And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. You are ready to read your prophecy now. Verse 3. Shekete baba baba. Hambrende sekele bakariada baba baba. He said, and I will give you the hidden riches of secret places. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, I'm ready to receive. Your word says you will smash the dead. And you will give me the hidden riches of secret places. Come on, pray, Koinonia. The meeting is already on. Pray. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. hallelujah the last scripture Isaiah 43 Isaiah 43 from verse 16 Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready? Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. How can a man make way in the sea? Hallelujah. Verse 17. Who bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together they shall not rise and they are extinct they are quenched as a weak verse 18 is a prophecy to someone he said remember ye not the former things forget about the disappointment of yesterday forget about who said what forget about what did not work are you hearing me forget about the result of yesterday forget about what the doctor said he said remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old why verse 19 behold i will do a new thing oh yes he will do a new thing now we shall spring forth shall ye not know it i will even make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert i like you to lift your voice and say lord i forget about the failures of yesterday i forget about the failures of yesterday in the name of jesus what the lord will do will surpass what you expected him to do pray i remember not the disappointment I remember not the failure go ahead and prophesy it's a new season god is doing a new thing god is doing a new thing receive it as a prophecy hallelujah May your ears hear it may your eyes see it and may your hands handle it i prophesy one more time may your ears hear about it 
may your eyes see the miracle and may these hands that are lifted may these hands handle it in the name of the lord jesus christ give god a shout of praise and be seated hallelujah thank you jesus once in a while god gives us prophetic words like this to shake off every unbelief hallelujah thank you jesus one of our passions as a ministry aside from helping people experience intimacy with the holy spirit one of our passion is to help people understand the principles of the kingdom everybody say the principles of the kingdom one of the greatest revelation in my life was the understanding that the kingdom of god is a system that is built on definite structures for me that was the ultimate confirmation that god is a just god hallelujah the bible says he's no respecter of persons and he does not show favoritism whoever can walk this principle of the kingdom earns the right to walk in certain strange order of graces and blessings and may that be your portion tonight in the name of jesus christ so tonight i want to share with us something when the lord gave me the word that is increasing and expanding our greatness i knew at once that my job is to prepare us so that we do not miss out on the prophetic things that god is doing hallelujah thank you jesus you will be lifted in the name of jesus christ tonight i want to share a very simple spiritual principle and i will tell you why certain people rise and get to some levels and never rise beyond it if you listen if you if you listen and understand what i will teach tonight truly your path will be as a shining light we have prayed we have spoken the word but now is the time to settle down and listen and know how to align with prophecy he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you war a good warfare with the prophecy that has been spoken to you it's not enough that the word comes we must know how to align with the word say amen and tonight i want to teach on a very powerful spiritual principle write it down faithfulness 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 that spiritual formula that governs the rising of men from one level to the other faithfulness i want to show you a powerful formula part of the construction of the kingdom of god this principle was put there and if you know how to walk it then you will keep rising everybody say faithfulness the first point i want you to know tonight is that it is god's desire for us to experience ever increasing success and greatness in every area of our lives it is god's desire for everyone everyone under the sound of my voice and those connecting with us online it is god's desire for everyone to experience ever increasing success ever increasing greatness is god's desire for you to move from one level of glory to another it's important that you know that it is god's desire there are people who do not believe 
that it is God's desire for them to experience the blessings of God to rise from one level of kingdom influence to the other say it is the desire of God to see me increase hallelujah but then this these greater levels that we talk about doesn't just come just because of prayer or prophecy alone there are kingdom principles that we must abide by and if we do then we'll be able to step into these levels and one of them one of them is faithfulness hallelujah there are very few teachings about this faithfulness we teach on prayer we teach on many aspects of kingdom principles and they are good but i, I will show you the all surpassing excellency of faithfulness and how it is able to take a man from nothing and take you to the top hallelujah what is faithfulness right faithfulness means continuous unrelenting loyalty and commitment please write i want to be very simple so that every one of us will understand continuous unrelenting loyalty and commitment be it towards god be it towards men or be it towards a cause unrelenting continuous loyalty and commitment towards god towards men or towards a cause faithfulness faithfulness is such a powerful kingdom principle that god himself called one of the names of god is faithful he is not just he doesn't just have faithfulness he is faithful that is the quality of god that makes him trustworthy it is the faithfulness of god i remember preaching a message was it last year or year before last faith in the faithfulness of god hallelujah to be faithful means to be dependable it means to be loyal it means to be trustworthy please i want you to pay attention tonight this simple kingdom principle has been the reason why many people have failed to rise from their current level of grace or current level of blessings to the next but tonight as light comes you will arise in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen the blessings of god upon a man's life always come in levels write it you must understand this this is how the kingdom functions there's no other way no matter how anointed you are the blessings of god the anointing of god the grace of god comes upon a man's life in levels hallelujah the blessings of god come in levels listen just this this revelation enough this one i just told you is enough deliverance for many people who want to get blessed you know all this sharp sharp mentality right and the youth in nigeria have this mentality the average young man is in a hurry we want to be blessed we want to make money fast hallelujah a man starts a ministry now and in one year he wants to have fifty thousand people he wants to have 30 branches let me tell you the truth if you understand the structure of god's kingdom and how he blesses men you will stop struggling in your life many of the things that people call satanic oppression is not satanic oppression is the consequence of the violation of god's order of lifting people hallelujah a man starts a ministry and all of a sudden he sends all kinds of young people to the 36 
regions of this nation and say go and start the branch of the church the kingdom does not work that way in the parable of jesus he said the kingdom of god is like a seed have you read that before the kingdom of god always starts small and then it begins to rise and the factor the report card is faithfulness hallelujah Matthew 25 Matthew 25 very interesting parable that Jesus gave verse 14 Jesus is giving us a parable now see listen the Bible is not a storybook. The Bible is the wisdom of God. And if you follow through, especially the teachings of Jesus, you will see the order and the operation of the kingdom. The way the kingdom was supposed to function. Verse 14. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is as that means likened to a man. All right. Traveling into a far country. And he called his servants. Three people, please. Three people. Come. You are the servants. Just stand. Three people where's the third person just stand face the congregation for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country and called his own servants and delivered unto them goods look up the bible says they are his servants that means he has been watching them is that true do you agree with me for them to be his servant it means they had a period of time when they were serving him and while they served him he kept watching and on the strength of his judgment and his findings next verse and unto one he gave what five talents right unto the second he gave what two talents and to the third he gave what what was the factor it says according to their several ability in other words their capacity to manage that resource are you following me now not according to their prayer request not according to the prayer point they dropped during miracle service according to their ability that had been proven with time and you will see at the end of the parable that the man did not make a mistake ready next verse then he left he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made five more talents so this guy went and brought back profit verse 17 likewise the other who received two he gained another two all right then the third one it says but he that received one went and dug the earth you sow seeds not talent what you sow in the earth is a seed are you getting my point you don't sow talent in the earth and he took that talent and sowed it in the earth and hid the lord's money after a long time aha this is another principle what is jesus teaching us here that every time god trusts you with whatever level of grace he will come back there will be accountability are you getting my point there will be a defense there will be a supervision and the report card is what will determine whether you will rise to a new level or not please listen to me and many of you you will know the reason why although you are anointed you've not backslidden but you may never rise to another level until you pass the test of this current level hallelujah so he came back to ask the servants verse 20 so he that had received five talents he now came to the master right and brought five more in other words you gave me five master i went and i faithfully used it and this is the prophet the one that had two okay listen 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 it says the lord said unto him please go back to verse 20. behold i have gained besides them five talents more let's see what the master said verse 21 and the lord said unto him 
well done good and did he say good and hard working servant good and faithful servant thou has been what faithful are you seeing now that's the quality i gave you certain gifts i gave you certain opportunities i gave you certain anointings i gave you certain graces i connected you with certain people he said you have been faithful over a few things what's the reward it says i will make you ruler over what many things did the guy pray for it did he fast for it he just showed himself faithful and the lord said i'm ready to take you in other words your faithfulness is your report card that you qualify to enter the next level enter thou into the joy of the lord 22 he who had received two talents came and said you did this and that and that verse 23 the lord said unto him also same word well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make you ruler over what this is jesus teaching he's teaching us how the kingdom works let's see what happened to the third person 24 and he which had received the one talent came look at the guy this is the one talent guy now just, just watch carefully he said lord that's him talking now after a long time of god entrusting him with an anointing after a long time god gave him five members and gave him one year and kept watching what he was doing with the five members are you getting my point he kept grumbling and comparing himself with other people and doing all kinds of things and here's his report lord i knew that you were a hard man look look at this guy he's talking to the man who gave him the gift lord i know you are a hard man reaping where you have not sown can you imagine what did they call the money he said it is the lord's money but this guy is now saying you want me to be the one praying for the sick then i'll be giving you glory you are shining up there i'm here suffering and praying for people are you getting the point now he said he, he, he was see the bible says out of the abundance of the heart so this guy had been locked up in bitterness and anger waiting and say let, let this lord come we are going to flog out this issue once and for all he could not wait number five finished his own number two he said thank god it's my turn lord i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you do not sow he says and gathering where you have not strawed 25 i was afraid instead of wasting my time to build an empire and for you to come and say it's your own it made me afraid i don't want to waste my time doing something i will not enjoy the glory directly are you getting what the guy is saying i'm not ready to just work for you and then at the end i will now come to you and say all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god that's what these guys did are you getting me they came back and said this is what you have done but all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god this guy was angry he said this song is not for me oh hallelujah and he was telling god his own version of the song what's the version all the glory belongs to me all the glory belongs to me oh god talking to the lord now stood and looked at him eyeball to eyeball are you getting my point now it says and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo here it is collect your thing wicked man i can't be walking and then you come back and then you want to take the glory take your talent let's listen to what the master called him verse 26 the lord answered and said thou and thou wicked and lazy servant thou knewest that i reap where i sowed not and gather where i have not sowed what brought you into ministry since you knew that the glory belongs to me oh god give me talent give me church god gave you two members now you are complaining who pursued you who put a gun and said enter ministry hallelujah 
thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming i would have received it with interest verse 28 therefore listen this is what will happen to any man that is found unfaithful it says take therefore it's not only the devil that takes from people it's in your bible god can take away from unfaithful men and bless those who are faithful take therefore the talent from him and give it to him that has what in other words take from the one who is least faithful are you getting my point now and give it to the one who has proven to be more faithful listen all the three were servants all the three were emojis all the three were graduates right but over time the master kept studying their lives and he found out that this faithfulness this formula that qualifies men to the next level they had it in different degrees so you can graduate we all graduated from so 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 and so department and then after three years you will find out that the other person probably the one you've been laughing at are you getting my point when i heard khadija giving her testimony i just sat down and i said to myself oh god i can tell you in all sincerity and it's not because she's here while she was here she was faithful very faithful please sit down god bless you sir. hallelujah could this be what has been stopping you from entering the next level hallelujah and i'll make it very practical now so that you will understand i told you the blessings of god always come in levels no matter how anointed you are a lot of people have gotten into trouble for instance from all these these comings and all these these things that they do on internet you just go on internet and say you won 2.5 million dollars and you are foolishly smiling to yourself say don't tell anybody and you keep quiet you see that you just go around dreaming you see people shouting at you you say it's only a matter of time i'm coming the reason is because we do not understand the way the kingdom is built when you know how god blesses and lifts people at once you will know what is not of god is someone hearing what i'm saying now hallelujah somebody walks up to you sorry about the light i'm sure they are working on it hallelujah it's a good way to preach no distraction no looking at ladies you hear the word undiluted thank you jesus let me use the opportunity and say what i have to say ah praise god sorry about the sound when god trusts you with small and you refuse to regard it and be faithful then you do not qualify to walk into the greater levels hallelujah I know there are many kingdom principles that can accelerate accelerate our blessings we have double portion we have sevenfold anointing huh we have the favor of god tapping into prophetic uh uh unction or fountain or whatever but let me tell you and listen i learned this in a very painful way look up please i want to talk to you never try to lift a man that God has not lifted you will be fighting God and you will be an enemy of God and he will curse you there are many of you you see certain people at the same position and you'll be like ah, uh -uh. oh God but this sister is faithful God you said you should have blessed her and God is saying leave me alone I'm the one who sees the heart of men listen if God does not lift anybody leave them there are you getting what I'm saying many people have entered into a lot of casualties 
because they want to help certain people you see a man of god and you say after two years your church is still five members abba oh god boy you are anointed you are such a nice brother you greet every sister that comes and god is saying continue talking there i know why i kept five people then you see another person who looks very scattered and suspicious and god blesses the person i say god this thing i think we need to coordinate this god is saying who is the lord is somebody learning something tonight say faithfulness say it again faithfulness the blessings of god always come in levels that means whatever level god gives you the greatest way to prepare for the next level is not to be crying and fasting and say oh god when will it come when will that anointing come when will they start putting water for come, come and carry this my water and bring oh yeah now bring this my water some of you when you saw them putting the water you were just looking and say ah when will my turn come it will never come till you stop thinking about it hallelujah when you see the people serving it you just laugh and in your mind you're already wishing oh lord give me a church give me a ministry end this my inferiority complex oh lord and god is just watching you he said you think the kingdom is a place of joke see that that's what that's what some of us you know ah yeah the things that people think about in the house of god as a hot message like this is going on there are many people looking at so many things being distracted at so many things hallelujah faithfulness you came into a church and they say okay join the workers say join which kind of workers i was bible study secretary in my 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 local assembly i even led the choir you are now giving me chair to clean God they didn't send me that I would do that one. No, give me something that is charismatic, evangelism or prayer or something that will bring me out on the scene. Hallelujah! And then you will find out that you can be in that church with them. God trains you at that season, He will build you. There is a season in your life where you can make mistakes and go scot free. God is building you. Are you getting my point? When you prove yourself to be faithful, one day God will come to you and say, You have been faithful. You are always cleaning chairs. You are coming early. By two o'clock, you come. Nobody knows you, but you are cleaning the chairs. And as you are cleaning the chairs, you are saying, Oh Lord, I thank you. Those who will sit on these chairs will be blessed. Somebody may look at you and say, Sister if his husband you want come for miracle service you know that's how people talk once they see commitment in the house of god they say the way this sister is walking i'm sure there's one brother that is eyeing her must it be so or when a brother is doing something he says he's looking for pastor the way this guy is doing his pastor is looking for commit yourself to be faithful I've shared my testimony was it in 94 or so 94 95 hallelujah there used to be a man a church that started called power praise chapel the name of the man i don't know if the church is still there or if the man is still there emmanuel amechi ani i'll never forget his name they started the church in a hotel not too far from our house and they brought somebody that would teach me keyboard he was part of those who brought somebody so when the church started they said i should come and play keyboard when i came to the church no choir no nothing i would trek from my house with my own money and my own keyboard and take it to the church i've said it again they never gave me anything no thank you after service the only thing they gave me once was fanta and one cassette when the man did his launching one fanta bottle fanta and one cassette and i accepted it with gratitude in fact it was my father started getting concerned because i would go to a local church i would come back and then have to go and play keyboard for them and trek back home but god is my witness i never had cause to complain once listen if you are working in a place 
and your leaders are not good and you find yourself talking you are sowing a seed you will reap it for sure hallelujah there are people who will never walk in a place faithfully their job is to observe what is wrong why is this lady always looking towards where apostle sits and what is her business why are you taking it personal what is your own problem she be you came to bless god too have, be, have you been noticing whatever it says you are not the only one who have been noticing this thing rather than getting blessed listen listen rather than getting blessed you are just sitting down yeah, that's how they keep doing everywhere and you will see god lifting them higher and you will remain there and you keep getting angry because every time god comes there is a report card your faithful service hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying a sister can be faithfully sweeping the house of god and say lord i'm not doing this because i want a husband but i'm committed i'm faithful i will serve you whether they laugh at me or not i will do it and one day she's sweeping that's when god will position one brother him is coming to pray god will say turn left say lord what are you saying say turn left it's time for you to change levels and the sister is just sweeping her thing i'm serving the god of miracles i know yes i know and the naysayers and the backbiters are there watching all of a sudden you will see somebody you saw rise up to a dimension you cannot even look at them again faithfulness hallelujah come to him i'll never forget she used to be the one leading worship before we started koinonia remember somebody will come for those of you who were there Binga, they'll play the guitar and she'll come and lead worship i will never forget one day i lashed them can you remember the day i lashed you seriously very seriously they were not serious with their work and i came that night from i came from the throne room with such an anointing and when i came you know it's not my fault jesus entered the temple when he saw what was going on in the temple say it's the zeal of the lord and that day i made sure that i told them before the meeting they must pray for one hour pray in tongues for one hour clean out every flesh that can corrupt what people need to hear god has honored her today i'm saying this when you see god lifting people in spite of your criticism keep quiet and find out what is being done that you are not doing bless you are you getting my point now say lord i receive grace to be faithful god gave you an anointing you can't heal any sick body but he gave you grace to preach you have refused to preach you don't do any evangelism see i'm tired of this evangelism that doesn't have power how about I, I let, let me shine too when i pray let the person fall how can i be frustrating myself i'm talking the guys agree with me i'm quoting a scripture he's responding back lay hands on the guy and let him wake up and know that there is a potential difference that's what you want and god is watching god is saying look at this is the level of grace that i gave you and this is what you are doing with it remain there until you learn the art of faithfulness that takes you to another level that's why overtaking is allowed in the spirit you can see a man will come and in one year he has entered some levels and you have been there for three years you get the same job in the same office other people are eyeing the boss shouting there and there this boss likes women the other one is saying lord i thank you for the privilege although they are paying me twenty thousand, i know it cannot do anything i thank you and i'll be faithful the other one is saying we wicked boss you give us twenty thousand. we are here walking you are using a phone of two hundred thousand. you are there grumbling and god is watching you hallelujah do you know god watches your works as you serve as you are faithful 
God gave you a little level. When I started out, I didn't start as anointed as this. It would have been witchcraft if I started like this. Line upon line. Faithfulness. I remember when we were very few. Those who were around. One day we went for evangelism in Jamaa Hospital. We went there and invaded the place. Just went to preach and share the love of Christ. You are not ready to start small. Some of you, the way you start is true that God has called you in the ministry. And you, you've seen the stadium. You've seen yourself parking wheelchairs. And you will never start small. You want to start from the stadium. One foolish boy brought a letter for me that they want to, the spirit of God led them to hold one crusade. What's the name of that place? Where they play golf on your way to huh? Polo Field. I said Polo Field. As if I don't know God, you better go and settle down and start small. They just came some boys. Said, God gave us an instruction. He said, I saw it the other night. The way they were boiling, as if they want to start praying. I said, calm down. Polo Field. God gave you a vision. Go to Polo Field. See, all this, if you know the kingdom and you understand the structure, not even visions will mislead you visions and revelations have made people to do stupid things the word of god that reveals the structure of the kingdom is surer than any dream you will have and any prophetic word you will be given god will never let me tell you take a man who is not faithful and put him in a high position it does not work like that hallelujah it doesn't work like that say i receive grace to be faithful say it i receive grace to be faithful there are many of you i'm telling you you would have left the level that you are now if only you were faithful you've not been faithful with the anointing god gave you you started business god gave you fifty thousand. you are complaining and grumbling out of the profit of the fifty thousand. You bought clothes. You bought phone. You are shining. And you say, I'm a kingdom financier. God said, no way. You can sing songs about millions. You can draw dollars on your pillow. You will never be a kingdom millionaire. But God trusts you with 50,000. And you say, Lord, out of this that you have given, your kingdom, your kingdom. And God says, you did this for me and then god will test you and say lay down that isaac and you say lord is painful but let it go god will say you qualify step into the next level hallelujah god made you a prayer coordinator of your small fellowship and you are faithful you are praying you are seven in the whole group but you are praying oh god bless these people may they find salvation they are walking in holiness they are walking in truth bless them bless their academics increase them there's nobody to tell you thank you nobody to tell you well done even when you know they are criticizing you when you know they are saying this ogasa this your spirituality is too much you say lord bless them i still love them god says this looks like the kind of person i can bless are you hearing what i'm saying you are not faithful there are many people who will never be parents because they have not proven to be faithful children you insult every elderly person around you including your parents and now you want a husband you want a wife with your bad attitude so that you make your child become like what you are god said no way we are rehabilitating the young people in the earth you must change before i trust you Are you, are you getting what I'm sharing tonight? It's a very serious message. Be faithful. Stop eyeing a high position somewhere. Be faithful. Be faithful. Hallelujah. Jesus started with a few disciples. And then there were so many people. Then there was a crowd. It didn't just start with a crowd financially God wants you to be a multi-millionaire 
and you just saw somebody <laughs> one of my friends called me very humorous person and he called me he said josh in my presence somebody bought a jaguar a new jaguar 18 million tear rubber hi i said mm -mm, this is the devil here this is not vision this is the devil this kind of lost you see that your own god gave you a golf you are embarrassed <laughs> especially when you see ladies he said come and push this golf out of here now i see this not your own this is what society has made us to become and god is watching you yes you have to open the door from outside but give thanks lord i give you thanks it's better than a bicycle i glorify you i'm not ashamed of it and you get up in the morning you are cleaning it when the tire is as if it's your child that is sick you go and fix it god is saying you have this guy is faithful whenever there is anything in the house of god you say well don't laugh at my golf it's available if you cannot carry people you can carry sound can you use it and god says look at what this guy is doing all of a sudden somebody will walk somewhere and say the lord led me aha to bless you with another car and he said lord it has not changed my faithfulness and you take care of it god gave you a car in three months it has packed up you don't wash it you don't take care of the tire the cars the plugs are everything is jacking you say keep jacking you must keep moving till it dies and you leave it there unfaithfulness unfaithfulness as little as clothes god gives you clothes you don't wash them you don't iron them and you say lord you better bless me all these prophecies that they are giving god is saying what does it cost for me to bless you but you have not proven that you are faithful I receive grace to be faithful that's what I, I tell God all the time this work this little work that God has given I, I, I take it that's why I take my job seriously every time you see me I, I'm in an attitude of seriousness not because there is any human being coming to supervise me I put a sense of urgency time to pray when I'm praying for you nobody disturbs me I shut up the place and I'm praying. I say, Lord, you have committed these people and it's my job to pray. Bless them. Even those who are not tithing, let the tithe of the house cover for them while they listen to the message. You have not tithed for one year and the heavens are still opening over you. Let me tell you that it is these prayers that we are praying. A day will come, God will shift you out alone. And then you say, so this is how the heavens have been. Faithfulness. God gave you the opportunity to play keyboard you don't rehearse you are not serious you are not improving yourself you are there angry with anybody who can see there are certain people because of our lack of faithfulness we never appreciate what gives what God gives us we always want more and we are always envious and angry at people rather than being faithful intimidated by people and we oh god i want this i want this and many of us get into all kinds of things that's what has made many men of god to get into witchcraft the truth is the honor they want to get is going to come how many of you know that all of us here will be blessed we are going to be blessed the millions will come a day will come the things you admire now see I used to think I like food. It's a lie. I don't like food. Lack. Everybody say lack. There is a there is a way lack can hit you. It will create lust in you. Anything you see, it must finish before you rest. That's what was happening to me. Listen, the things you admire about people that make you unfaithful with God if you can be faithful you will walk in it all these cars you see an average young man under pressure people lie everywhere say I ask them where are they walking say I'm, I'm walking with one uh, uh, construction what is the name I say it's a construction company I shuttle Abuja and uh, Zaria so what are you doing now I came to solicit for another job is it true it's a lie what is pursuing you 
impatience and lack of faithfulness whereas you are working in a cafe that's a construction company you are working in a cafe and you are embarrassed by it whereas you would have been faithful god has blessed me with a job don't say i'm managing you are not managing you are creating a report card that will bless you hallelujah i'm in a cafe now how much do you earn i earn five thousand say you what kind of why are you falling your hand like this no problem say if it's five thousand let me give you your salary for this month and people intimidate you no problem he should carry his money and keep showing everything you just be faithful sister till now you cannot afford a withdrawal of one five no problem no problem i can plant i'm using my natural hair but i love god and i'm faithful i won't follow any man because of money my god will give it to me one of the miracles god did in my life is that i never this craving this craving for material things that you see somebody and say oh god if you don't take me there no one day i went to buy suit and somebody said this is the fashion in town i said i don't know who are the day i will buy what i want don't put any pressure on me who are the day what fashion where i buy what is good i buy what i like i pay for it if i cannot pay for it i go and wait patiently many of us there are shops you cannot pass right now you have eaten almost one quarter of everything there your money is not enough to buy it but you must buy it every time you pass i want black currant how much 600 how much do you have 59 I say, oh, just give me because we cannot be faithful at this level everybody said receive grace to be faithful refuse to be embarrassed at the level you are now serve god faithfully let men criticize you let men talk let them say you are looking for a name let them say you are looking for a husband or wife no problem be faithful the god who sees your faithfulness when he begins to reward you even you you can't stop it you have a ministry here god has committed two people be faithful pray for the two people pray teach them truth if you have 200 naira and they are hungry sacrifice it god is watching that was what happened to david everybody say david david for a few sheep brothers and sisters david went to the wilderness he risked his life to save a few sheep the brothers had thrown him down but god was watching him and Eliab and all the happening guys God was just watching them when it was time for for people to be blessed Eliab came out broad chested God said no way these are not the kind of people I'm not looking for warriors on the throne I'm looking for faithful servants you are in the worship team they never gave you a song to back up but that I mean to to lead but when you stand here huh, and you are faithful you are singing from the depths of your heart you don't just grumble and say this coin on yourself the way they do their things just a few people who are shining once you hear people complaining like that the truth is is they want themselves to be in that position they will use a third party statement they say why is it that only a few decoration ladies are sitting in front once you hear people talk like that they are not lawyers they are not advocating for anybody they are speaking for themselves it's not like i'm speaking about myself or it's not me I, I, who asked you say i receive grace to be faithful god wants to increase us financially but what have you done with the finances that god has given you you keep wasting money around throwing money everywhere doing things that do not glorify god and then you stand and believe that God is going to carry 1 billion or 10 million or 100 million and give to you. And then you see God bless someone else and you are like, ah, God. I receive grace to be faithful. Lord, I thank you. If it is to sweep, the psalmist said, I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. A doorkeeper. 
God is speaking to someone tonight. I want to lift you up. But you have not been found faithful. You have not been found faithful. The little anointing I gave you. You have only been falling and rising. You have not done anything with it. Hallelujah. There are ministries who will never experience the prosperity of God. Not because they are not tithing, but they are not faithful. They are not faithful at all. The members raise offering. The men of God misuse the money. They do anything they want to do with it. The man of God is celebrating a birthday party. And they, they waste so much amount. And the ministry is just starting. They don't have that kind of money. You see that? And we put pressure. We men of God put pressure on people. Make me the biggest cake. 30,000. Make me this. And this is the money of the house of God. You're using it and wasting it. And God says, no way. You can't rise beyond this level. But God commits resources to a house. And he's seen the way the, the finances of the Lord's house are being used. He's seen the faithfulness. He's seen accountability. God says you are ready to move higher. Who is God speaking to tonight? You've been unfaithful. God gave you one room. You never cleaned it for once. Everywhere in the room is leaking. Including under the house. You have never said, let me call somebody to smell. He says, is it my property? This beat you. Is it my property? And you want God to honor you. You want God to bless you. Hallelujah. Your neighbor always picks you and brings you for koinonia. You've never said, let me contribute small foil. 2,000 naira. You had the car making all kinds of noise. You cannot be faithful. God will never, never. It doesn't work that way. Who is God speaking to tonight? Many of us will need to pray tonight and say, Lord, I repent. I've not been faithful. You want to rise higher. Uh -uh. You watch television and you see great people like David Oyedeko and you see all of the crowds and all of the things and there are men who sit down just wishing and they dreaming wishing and they dreaming saying let's calculate how much prophet offering will come to this man now see what you are thinking say ah a man with this crowd the money you carry that anger and come back to your small fellowship and you see four people four committed people didn't I tell you to bring five five people Wife, stand up. Why have you not brought five, five people? You must bring five, five people. Have you been faithful? The, the five people are not learning anything. For one year, they cannot tell you one kingdom principle. You've not made warriors out of them. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't grow. They are not knowing the Lord. They lack intelligence. And God is saying, this is the same thing you will do if I give you hundred people. There are many men of God who want crowd. They don't study they don't pray you meet them all the time they are snoring snoring playing computer games watching football you think ministry is just an occupation and god looks at your heart and says no i can send you to go and assist i can send you to go and help but i will never send you to lead my work you are not faithful you are vulnerable he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny listen there were times i would prophesy and speak over people nothing will happen maybe in a crowd like this there may just be one testimony and i said i will be faithful if i cannot pray for the sick at least i can pray for the people and i know god will hear my prayer god saw my heart till today till tomorrow god knows that my desire for more anointing is never so that they will say joshua selman is a great man people say all kinds of things send all kinds of text messages and i thank god but god knows for the rest of my life I remain a servant serving the house of God forget about all of this little honor that comes this is if you want it the welfare the welfare can give you 
when you see all the protocol standing following me ah when koinonia started i used to climb bike machine during miracle service there will be crowd inside and outside you just see me coming on machine shape blah, 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 blah. bless your people oh god change their story change their life and it was never an embarrassment it was a protocol department that decided they said kai please honor to whom honor is due this is over tomorrow now somebody will see me coming down from a jeep that god has blessed me with you will now be angry why are you angry i climb bike i enter taxi some of you are embarrassed to enter bus after service to go you say no let them not know that i didn't come with my car and you start explaining to everybody my car was faulty who asked you enter the bus and go home enter the bus and go home everybody knows you are still rising there is no revelation that will convince us you have gotten there we are all young people rising it's just that some are faster than others what's the embarrassment about somebody comes to your room and it's only gary you have you are hiding until the leather falls out of your wardrobe and you embarrass yourself bring it out and say this is what i have god is faithful the day you buy a recharge card lord i thank you i could afford a recharge card the day you buy a fridge see don't be embarrassed let men see you at your level now so that they will see the faithfulness of god great is thy faithfulness oh god my father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not thy compassion they fail not as thou hast been thou forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning, you must sing it from your heart. All I have needed, I have signs provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Some of you are even ashamed to introduce your parents to other people. Because your mother sells a car and your father is a carpenter and you are a fine lady, you don't want to fall your hand. That is foolishness of the highest order. The person who played the fatherly role of Jesus was a carpenter. Are you getting my point? Get this childishness out of your life. There are some of you here, the work that you do, you wash clothes for people, is better than prostitution, is better than stealing. Learn dignity in labor. Be faithful there. You're working and they're giving you 200 naira. It's small, but the 200 naira is with dignity. There are many of you. God gave you an idea. You and somebody put a small joint for a car and you laughed. You laughed at God like Sarah. He said, God, if you don't, if you cannot bless me, I can wait. There are some of us here. God told you I will take you far but start selling used clothes you said ha ah, God used clothes I have never worn a, a these clothes that the one uh, what they call it hallelujah I only wear designers why will I now begin to sell used clothes oh Lord you are falling my hands and God will say you never will qualify to rise to that level where you will be committed with the true riches of the kingdom some of you are you are not in any unit not in your church not in koinonia you don't serve you don't do anything your job and you've been coming here for a long time your job is to sit down watch others and complain about what is not done do you know that faithfulness faithfulness is how god blesses people hallelujah someone can say me oh god i put it as a self-imposed work my my covenant with you 
is that every time I will be cleaning the pulpit, I would liaise with decoration. Please give me the opportunity. My job is to be cleaning the pulpit of the house of God. Nobody needs to know you. See, take what I'm saying seriously. If you are interested in rising to the new level, there is a level of death that must happen to you. You must show God that you are not ashamed of your current level. hallelujah there are people in the house of god faithfulness god gave you little blessings and they say let's kneel down in the presence of god you now lay down one hand as if as if you are asking your wife out to marry you kneel down before the presence of god and be serious the one who has kept your life all this nonsense people do in the house of god i tell you papa adeboye till today he travels around the world what's that thing that they play tambourine right he carries his tambourine among the the world's hundred most influential people it has not changed him he takes his tambourine whenever he goes to a place no matter who you are he will get down on his knees and start singing to the one who took him from where he was and brought him here i choose to be faithful i will never allow anything stop me from rising to the new level that's why you can listen to a man it's not like he has so much rema or he has so much but he will just say may god increase you and the door will open because of faithfulness and some people will come on on stage and shout as if they are forwarding a tape and nothing happens to anybody this is the place of the anointing you will find the anointing in the place of faithfulness this morning i was just worshiping and i said lord will you bless your people worship was just playing early in the morning and i was crying tears were coming out i said lord there are people coming tonight with burdens there are people coming trusting god a lady came in from just i'm sure she's around this lady took a step of faith nobody no place to stay she just came in she said i'm tired of what is happening in my life how could i come and stand on the stage and then begin to make all kinds of noise that's why we pray that's why i take this work that god has given because i know that before i was born god has been blessing people and if i'm not serious he will get me out of the stage and you see let me tell you Dr. Paul and Encher said, it is God who will use the calabash to fetch water so that he will disgrace the pot. When the pot thinks I'm the only one, God will use calabash with holes inside and still fetch water. Never find yourself thinking God cannot do without you. That is a big deception. Oh, God can do without Joshua Selman. God forbid if I die today, ah yes, you will cry for one week. You say why did he die you go and listen to all my messages that i say i wouldn't die say till he has died after one week case closed you will fight yourselves looking for who to lead here and by the time you finish the fight something <laughs> ah thank you for this deliverance oh lord i have no business in all of this nonsense my desire is to serve you my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised i tell you that's that's my desire that you be praised and i will be faithful in doing this my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised you want the anointing be faithful you want greater levels be faithful where you are right now whatever department you are working be faithful stop complaining stop finding faults contribute your quota and God who sees what you are doing God gave us a word that is lifting us and that means he's calling on us to be faithful one of these days God is going to be moving across this congregation checking the report cards of men let me see your prayer life did you pray for the house 
where nobody saw you were you worshiping in spirit and in truth hallelujah i told him lord whatever will change my faithfulness in service whatever will make me to stop seeking the blessings of your people and start looking to build an empire for myself so that you say this is joshua selman and all the great works he has done oh may it be far from me if there is any prayer you will pray for me don't pray that god should give me money don't, don't pray all those things they will come naturally pray and say lord give him focus never to be distracted by all these things that cause great men to fall ministry you want this you want branches oh 26 branches the man of god now has a television ah ah my one desire is that you be praised is that you be praised is that you be praised god is talking because there are lots of young people rising with anointing and grace but you need a lot of guidance and grace otherwise you will just run with zeal without knowledge and you will crash land very badly stop mentoring the lives of wrong people who teach you that grace is grace of god is working in your life all of a sudden in two months your church grows to fifty thousand people is witchcraft god doesn't build people that way are you getting what i'm saying hear a little god will trust you with little be faithful when you are faithful with the little he trusts you he will take you higher and then leave you at that realm then you will be faithful then he will take you higher then you will be faithful then he will take you higher then you will be faithful then he will take you higher then you become arrogant then you remain in that level you add another arrogance you go down small then it reminds you that god can do without you then you repent and then you rise higher that's how people keep moving up and down as if they are playing computer game but once you maintain a life of humility that's how the, your path will be as a shining light men will just keep seeing you rising because god will say the way you love me bless you that's why sometimes i worship him in your presence so that you can see that you should never get into get to any level where you become too big some of us what we need to repent of tonight is big manism when you come to the presence of god pack whoever and whatever you have i love i love i love your presence i love i love I love your truth. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your truth. If only headache is being healed now, be faithful. The day God gives you an opportunity, to pray for someone's head pray for the head don't go and try and just get up god didn't lead you you go and tell somebody in the name of jesus you are seeing the person no legs he said legs grow you disgrace yourself and scatter what god has been trying to do god is trying to announce you slowly you now went and cancelled it because of pride or impatience right two dangers or two enemies of faithfulness very quickly and i'll round up number one is pride pride makes us not to be faithful at the level that we are in pride obadiah 1 verse 3 i saw a scripture that blew me i'll round up right now obadiah 1 verse 3 is god challenging someone tonight obadiah 1 verse 3 everybody read the pride of thy heart has deceived thee 
thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock whose habitation is high that saith in his heart who shall bring me down to the ground your pride has deceived you so that when God has given you grace for Saria pride has made you believe that you are supposed to be in a television ministry pride stops men from being faithful there are many churches in all kinds of debt now going to television ministry that they have no business going to god has not anointed them to that level yet see if god does not send you you can still move but the question is life will ask you who is sending you many of us pride pride the humility to remain at the level that you are in Where are you walking? Ah, uh, I shuttle between Zaria, Abuja, and Joss. What's wrong with saying, God is helping me? I've started. And I'm in Zaria. I'm doing something. God is faithful. Don't say I'm managing. Don't use that language. What you call managing is the prayer request of somebody else. We're managing with all these people while I'm working on another white-collar job. It is in that place of managing you will meet your miracle that will take you to another level so you refuse to be faithful because you think you are managing how much are they paying me in this primary school i'm teaching primary one to primary six you are teaching them much you are not faithful like david in the wilderness if you are faithful one day god can give you your own business empire and you sit down and say i once was a school teacher hallelujah A young man met me one time i looked at him i said how are you sir he said fine the way he was saying fine as if he was going to push me he was going to introduce himself i'm so so person i deal with oil and gas specifically offshore you know i have the company and i'm doing this and that and that and the xyz said i should meet you for xyz and all kinds of stories and then i was just looking at him and after he made all those noise you see if you are blessed you are blessed even if you are blessed and you choose to wear slippers you are still blessed if you are not blessed you are not blessed even if you choose to borrow a car you are still it's not your own after making all of that noise and jargon i was just looking at this brother why put yourself under pressure if you see the kind of cards that he printed war suit pencil tie oil and gas say so i receive grace to be faithful at the level that god has has brought me receive grace oh god jordan please stand up come i know when oh god listen let me tell you something i'm sorry if i pry a bit into your private life how many of you know life way for many years jordan walked with them and served faithfully many years while he was learning faithfully god was looking he never knew that one day he will have his own bookstore are you getting my point but he was faithful i will never forget when god blessed him his his shop was so small it was like a console room a few books here and there but God is lifting him the last time I spoke with him he's already making negotiations to begin to bring books directly from outside the country this is what faithfulness can bring there are people who have been binding demons for years and nothing has happened because of their arrogance listen say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be faithful with what God has given me and at the level he has placed me say it again in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be faithful the clothes you cannot afford now be patient are you hearing what I'm saying the hair you cannot buy now be patient brothers the shoe you cannot buy now the dress you cannot buy now be patient that's the second reason 
why people the second enemy of faithfulness impatience i always preach and i say impatience has cheated many people many of our parents are in debt of billions of naira today because they try to build a house that their colleagues were building that your financial level has not reached foundation enough at 50 million it would have built an estate a comfortable estate in a place i must go to gra i must go to my tama i must build in lekki whereas god gave you wisdom one small place outside the town six million would have comfortably built a house that you would have been renting you've carried many families are suffering today because of the ego of our parents pride made them to go and enter a deal that their finance cannot take sold the car sold the house sold the property sold everything because of impatience everybody say i receive grace to be patient say it i receive grace to be patient especially those of you in business say i receive grace to be patient there's no hurry be patient a prophecy has already gone ahead that you will be blessed be patient be patient do you know what patience can do in your life the bible says follow them who through faith and patience you are in ministry be patient say i will be patient say it again i will be patient stop getting up and your body is just shaking i want to organize program i want to organize program your body is just shaking you don't have the money i want to organize program and in that program i want to invite benny Hinn. i want to invite paul and i want to invite papa you god is leading you and say invite one brother in your fellowship that god is helping say, ah, which kind of brother i want the one that the, the posters very funny things people do there are ministries that run themselves down trying to invite men of god that they do not have the financial capacity and the organizational capacity to host them they just want a name i brought abc i brought xyz now you go and bring a man from london matthew ashimolo in your small church of 100 people and now the whole bill and everything for bringing the man and hosting the man is five or ten million and you are there sweating praying prayers you should not have prayed you would have quietly gone to lagos or come down to zaria or anywhere and find brothers and sisters who god is helping say i receive grace to be patient rise gradually i believe in faith i am a man of faith but faith is not foolishness are you getting me you rise from faith to faith you rise from stage to stage there are some of us right now you are in level one some you are in level two some god has blessed you are in level five be patient in the ark of noah the cheetah the fastest animal entered there the snail also got there it's a matter of time wherever god has not taken me i don't want any man to take me there are times i have consciously refused certain levels of exposure because i know in my spirit that the season for that dimension of exposure has not come and although there is room to go by the time you go you will die that's why a man of god can leave one geography go to another place and start failing and you are wondering is this not the anointed man you used to know hallelujah i will go i will go anywhere you lead me yeah. i will go rise up on your feet two prayer points and we're out of this place i don't just want to sound what god is saying just like i'm just making noise hallelujah all those who are worshiping with us for the first time i want you to come out i want to lay my hands on you the lord is leading me to do this all those worshiping with us for the first time i want you to just come out and stand here
I want to lay my hands and prophesy upon your life. Please, very quickly, we're out of time. Everyone, if this is your first time of coming, just come and line up here. Hallelujah. I want to lay my hands and prophesy the blessing of the Lord upon you. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's got a fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he will give up on you. Say, say, oh. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for coming. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. We honor you. We celebrate you. Now listen. When I lay my hands on you, as soon as I lay my hands on you, I just want you to go out. There is a committee that will meet with you. Hallelujah. They will meet with you and just greet you warmly. Ideally, I'm just supposed to call you, pray, and just bless you. But the Lord is leading me to lay my hands on you. Hallelujah. I like you to be praying. And as I lay my hands on you, just a touch. I want you to believe God. Whatever it is that you came here trusting God for. I want you to believe. As I lay my hands on you, for many of you, doors will be opened supernaturally. I want you to desire it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone in the congregation, stretch your hands. I will be very fast. Very fast. Just a touch. When I lay my hands on you, just follow the other people outside. Thank you, Father. Bless them, oh God. Bless them. I anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I, I anoint you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I anoint you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint you in the name of Jesus. I anoint you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint you. Receive the anointing. Receive breakthrough in every area of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive breakthrough. Let the hand of God be strong upon you. May the grace of God be at work in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke every spirit, every power of darkness that wants to destroy your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be free from any assault of darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I take authority over everything that is not of God in your life. Return with dramatic testimonies by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever is not working in your life, I command it to work now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the heavens are open towards you. The heavens are open over you. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the hand of the mighty God, the heavens are open towards you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, enjoy unlimited grace. Enjoy open doors by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the mighty name of Jesus, may the hand of God come strong upon your life. May he anoint you mightily. In the name of Jesus, may the grace of God speak in your life. Rise from one level of grace to another. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. You are blessed by the power of the Almighty. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Oh God, take away pride and impatience from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Take away pride. Pride. Pride and impatience. Please pray it. Lord, take away pride. Pride that stops me from being faithful at the level you have placed me. I take away that pride by the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray. I pray. I receive grace to stay at the level God has placed me. I receive grace to be faithful. I receive grace to be faithful. Faithful to God. Faithful to man. Faithful in the house of God. Pray. I receive humility in the name of Jesus. I refuse a fake life. I remain faithful and God will honor me. 
and bring me to a place of prominence it won't be long because my faithfulness is my report card that will qualify me to experience greater levels of grace now pray against impatience i receive patience in my life patience to move gradually patience to move one step at a time i'm not in a hurry i'm not in a hurry to be rich i'm not in a hurry to be influential i take my time i go through the school of the spirit i remain properly trained properly trained to be used by god i am well equipped i move from one level to the other The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing Wendy when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly Augustina Augustina I'm hearing a name like Augustina Augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me, release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. And as it's happening to you, it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a whole family that came. There is a family God wants me to minister to. You are five. Five people. I don't know if there is a mother. I'm seeing a family with five people. Who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention, please. 
he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ hallelujah so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for God so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called Jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ and then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister to you. are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me he suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my gifts when you died and rose 
comes again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me I really want to worship you my Lord you have won my heart and I am I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Hallelujah. So he gave like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen jesus did not just come please i want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray jesus did not just come to show us how god looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created he was invincible the Bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ a life that is crucified with Christ are we together now and then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago we know it as the passion of the Christ it started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him John chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters I know that we celebrate Easter today is Good Friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know I have the power to free you he said, ah, 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 ah. he said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words I was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless. I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. 
the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they're all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name Aaron, Kelvin, just get somewhere that they can sit around and I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me. Listen, please. About to destroy me. And the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself. And then someone comes. And while I'm on my way to destruction, he interrupts. And he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching this would have been you I hope you are watching I hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said I hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching because love is a verb are we together now I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you. But they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still would not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening 
he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah I didn't study English but I know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program. And I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him. I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read down what i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time 
the voice of judgment the voice of mess of, of of justice begins to speak i will not fight it but remember that i not only paid the price i paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ it's an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he's so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please, give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life
who is the here? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have a, um, what do we call it, uh, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life. It's the Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external input for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord was a savior 
became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is god who is at work in us to will and to do so it's working the moment the life enters you it's like a genetic mutation it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief comment not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life 
there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like men men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be I know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy so they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare and by warfare they mean a consistent never-ending contention both are wrong are we together this is prophecy but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy jesus christ has done everything he needs to do but i have a role to play 
nobody gets saved just because Jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh-huh the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when i'm tithing i'm not acting under the law i'm not trying to do something i am responding there is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my think god's life and all its content is away the life of god that can become any and everything any and everything christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging i'm not under any cause i'm not under this christ has redeemed me from the cause of the lord that's not a lie but you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then it says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest 
there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming um, you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the Spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it at the response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting god for all kinds of things here i'm teaching you how to get results tonight god is not a herbalist there is a participation a jimmy this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this his response now he's standing up is a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah a jimmy do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god looked for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. 
it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am Hallelujah If the father Did not give Jesus It's like a man Listen It's like a man who vowed to punish every offender And he saw his wife And the guy said I'm a just person And he punished his wife then somebody throws a and say, oh God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you. Listen. If it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then I assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night <laughs> hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say Lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can God do it listen don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed 
Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I have a part to play. I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak 
I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You ask us to come, we have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it shake it up we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend
be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away no man condemns you the mercy the mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn. 
they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say Lord my time for visitation is here I won't give up no I won't give up I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on until my change comes Lord I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on Till my answer comes I won't give up Lord, I won't give up I'll keep pressing on Until my change comes Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them Let's do it quickly, please One minute, everybody If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers. Next time, maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now, we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards. Leave her, John. Leave her. Whatever she wants to do, just let her do. hallelujah we are going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a God that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if I were you I would begin to prophesy over my request and say I wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life <laughs> Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it 
Hallelujah. Please pass the prayer request very quickly. Once we start, we're just going to move. Um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing, please make sure you get ready so that when it's time, we'll just do that very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Very quickly. And then um, we'll be able to minister to people. No matter what your condition is. One of the things that we're going to be releasing today, listen, we had an encounter. Um, we just returned from Ekiti State. It's a lovely place. And um, listen, something really happened. As they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti, we passed a small village. Please listen. A small village, the border between Kwara State and Ekiti State. And I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life. I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen. Is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and I told the guys, I said, when we're coming back, we're stopping here. You can trust me. Oh, the law of honor. As soon as we got there, we stopped and we came out. We went to the women. They could not understand English. Please, quickly, with a request. And we told them, we said, we're pastors. We went to minister in equity. And we're going back to the north. But we discerned that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then... A lot of things happened that I may not say here. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted. And they told him, we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said, we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. He's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play. He was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language. And my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying, releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him, honored him, sowed the seed into his life, appreciated all the people. We were on our way going back to the car. And I felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women. I went back to thank them and I saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that I said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and I saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Ketura. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees and we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I was, I don't know if I was sharing with them. I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something 
alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afer babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating i didn't see any hospital around here i just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of god You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that i always believed it but now that i've seen it ah there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer. Alive. 100 and something years. You see the women as if they are 50 something. But some of them are in their 90s, 80s, 100s. That's grace, brothers. It's not about anybody praying for longevity. There is an anointing that comes upon territories. And tonight, in the course of the meeting, is when it's time to pray that, please receive it. We need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom. Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness 
my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand lift the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shiba babakata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside 
Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. My dear, tap that lady for me. Yes, that lady nodding. An angel is touching you. He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy and say, Lord, this marks the end of it. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily, according to the seasons of life, they receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can. I saw a spirit and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake it, Kappa. Shake it, the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor
every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you 
but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep